Paper Cut here along with Jeff Seidel after another heartbreaking loss for the Detroit Lions. 1917, their second 1917 loss this season. Second time they've lost on the last second field goal. This one, 54 yards, wasn't quite as long as a Justin Tucker kick from a couple of weeks ago. That record setting 66 yarder, but heartbreaking nonetheless. Jeff, what's your sort of takeaway from this? I mean, we saw how emotional Dan Campbell was. We saw how close the Lions were. The main takeaway from this game. Like you said, we've seen it. Second time in three weeks. It's amazing. After the game, Campbell came out to a press conference and he had tears in his eyes. He, his voice was cracking. He was emotional. I think it says an awful lot about who he is, how he acts as a person. Um, this guy is raw and honest, yeah. but he's also a coach learning to be a Lions coach. And this is what happens to Lions coaches. Well, you would see a lot of learning from him on the field, but I think you're right. The emotion that he showed, um, in the locker room, not just with us in the media, but, but in the locker room after the game too, you know, I think that's something that endears him to a lot of people in the organization, to players, to other people, to fans too. I mean, these, you know, a lot of fans out there live and die with this team. Right. And, and to see how much it, how much it, it, it hurts Campbell to lose a game like that. And not just that, but to acknowledge it too. I mean, we've seen other coaches in the past who you can tell that they've had emotional losses, right. You can see it in their face, but they don't acknowledge it like Dan did. And what Dan said was, you know, that he hurts for the players, he hurts for the organization. And I think that resonates with a lot of people. And this was such an intriguing game. I, Maven comes and makes an amazing play. They get the ball back. As Goff is about to run on the field, Campbell tells him, I'm going to go for two when we score. Yeah. So they score. It really wasn't that hard of a decision, he said, because he had made the decision before the series even started. It's a play they had worked on in practice. Always went to Cephas. Cephas is hurt. And I thought that that was beyond yeah, intriguing how it's set up. And I, and I know people are going to talk about that's an aggressive why that's an aggressive play. Why do you go conservative with three sure. people rushing? I don't see it that way. I see it as a guy who knew if he goes overtime, he does not have the offense that can sustain drives to be able to score, like in an overtime situation. He's like, okay, one play, I'm going to go for this one. He knows he has a defensive backs that are incredibly weak. If you rush four, the argument is it's putting too much stress yeah. on the DBs. No, he, he made that argument after the game. I, I don't agree with it. I mean, look, I, I agree that, you know, when, when you're going for, um, you know, that two point play at the end of the game, right? Like that's the right thing to do. You have emotion on your side. You get that big strip from, from Jalen Reeves. Maybe that was a great play, by the way. All the kudos to, to Jalen Reeves, maybe on that swift scores three plays later, you're in the end zone, you're celebrating, you keep your offense on the field, you keep it rolling. I thought they had a nice, a creative play. I mean, I think it was Raymond that lined up in the backfield. It was a receiver that lined up in the backfield along with the running back. So they gave them a little bit of a different look. Good play, like like the aggression. I don't agree with rushing three there at the end. I mean, I know you do have to protect that secondary a little bit, especially with all the youth that they they have in there. And, and they had a rough day against Justin Jefferson. But maybe the best way to do that is by bringing more pressure. And we saw it against the Ravens, too, where rushing three didn't work on a fourth and 19 situation. I, I, I understand the logic, though. And that's one of those coaches' decisions. It's like, after the game, it's easy to go this way, that way. Um, I, the, the problem is they don't have enough talent. You right. know, they don't have enough talent to rush three because you're not going to get pressure. They don't have enough talent to uh, put it on your D-backs. That, that defense is – I know he praised the defense, but they gave up more yards than the, the Vikings usually gain. They didn't have Dalvin Cook, and the passing yards were pretty much equal. Well, I, I thought the, the front played really well, but the secondary remains an issue. I mean, Amani Aurorier had a, a rough day against Justin Jefferson. Obviously, it was one of the young cornerbacks that got beat on that last pass. Um, so they, they still have some some big-time issues to work through in the secondary there, but that's going to be a problem all season given their, their lack of depth in the secondary. The other – um, you know, issue, I guess, to, to come out of this and really through the first five games is Jared Goff and the turnovers. He has seven turnovers. Let, let's call it six because one of those was the, the early snap by Frank Ragnall, but six turnovers in five games. And he's a vet. That's something that when you are counting on a quarterback, you know, he's not going to make a lot of big plays downfield. Uh, so when you're when you're relying on Jared Goff to be the 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 game manager, he has to, he can't turn the ball over like he did. That's a big part of why the Lions are where they are right now at one five. Both in scoring position. Now one was on a hit, and okay, it's hard to kill yeah. somebody because you got killed. Um, but it, you do you have split the ball there. A little bit you do have that. to hold it. Yep. No, I mean look, he's. Uh, I think it's four fumbles and three interceptions this year. So he's, he's had a lot of ball security issues. Could have had another pick today uh, that Harrison Smith just didn't come up with on that long pass. Um, very last thing, let's end it with this. All right. Lions are 0-5. 
Uh, Joe Burrow went to the hospital after the game today. No idea what, what his status is. It was a throat injury. We all saw what happened with Frank Ragnall last year. But um, when do we think that the Lions are going to get their first win? I mean, they have, they have the Bengals. Then they go to the Rams. They play Matthew Stafford, their old friend. Uh, the Eagles at home. Then the bye week. I mean, look, if they don't beat the, the Bengals or the Eagles, we're talking about a month before they, before they win a game. So I want to ask you, 0-5, when do the Detroit Lions win their first game? When's their first game next year? <laughs> they're not going on <laughs> 17. Stop it. I get that everyone's like, they're not going on 17. They're, well, they're, they're well, fighting for Campbell till the end. So when are they when are they winning their first game? You think they can get one of these two? They're Eagles. at home, the Bengals and the Eagles. Eagles aren't very good. Eagles. Eagles. I think the Eagles too. I mean, look, if Joe Burrow doesn't play, that's a different story next sure. week. Um, certainly they could get the Bengals if Burrow plays. It's going to be tough. They've got a really good passing offense, and we saw, we've seen all year what the Lions secondary is like. Um, I don't think the Eagles are a very good team, so I'm with you. Maybe they get a win before the bye to avoid owning. No, y'all y'all need to know the ingenuity of this man and how this is set up. If you could only see it, I'm just saying. It's like a three-man rush. Oh, yeah. We've had some <laughs> Zoom issues the first couple of weeks. That's why we haven't been consistent with these, these post-game videos. We've had some, some Facebook issues. But today, got, it's sitting on a box of food. We're, we've got it propped up on a box of food. I hope I'm not – you know, what great out in your food or whatever that you're going to eat when you go back to the hotel. But in any event, that'll, uh, that'll do it for us out here. The Lions fall to 0-5. Dan Campbell, the first 0-5, first Lions coach to start his tenure 0-5 since Rod Marinelli, just the second of the Super Bowl era. Marty Morningweg is the other. So that's not good company to keep, but I like what he's doing. I like what the, uh, how the team is fighting for him. They just need to get some, they need to, they need to get a payoff for, for everything that's going on. That'll do it for Jeff Seidel. I'm Dave Burkett, Freak.com.